us and you know you got memories of being a kid hanging out with them or just hanging out with them nowadays you know but uh where are they going to go what's going to happen with them <clears throat> and uh going with that what are the possibilities of places they can go everybody's you know kind of meditated on what heaven is and they've had ideas and they've mentioned ideas of hell kind of jokingly you know people always bring up like you know either they'll bring up like the devil like poking you with a pitchfork or something like that or they'll even go more in, in like sort of detail but where it's like oh you burn forever and that's it you know they don't really think about it much um and i was thinking about it and i don't think there has ever really been um i've never been encouraged to meditate on hell to just sit there and think about what is hell you know um been kind of told like you know the idea is like kind of scrupulosity you know like you're afraid of you don't want to be too thinking about hell too much you don't you want to be a you don't want to be like stunned by the thought of hell um you kind of want to you know forget about it think about heaven think about something better um you know and so everybody's thought about heaven a good amount you know they're going to be doing their favorite thing it's going to be joy you know um but what will hell be, you know, and why is that not encouraged for us to focus and think about a possible reality for what the Bible would claim to be uh, most people, you know, that we see. Most people will go there. Um, so kind of just to start out my reasoning for why I think the meditation on hell should be possibly practice more and I really haven't done much meditation on hell myself um it's kind of just an idea that came to me recently but um it seems like God has kind of forced this on the on his saints on the people that he that really love him the most um he's he's given them the image of hell um I think because oftentimes we don't put the image in our head ourselves so it's kind of put on God to just put the image there for us and the idea of it. Um, so I'm going to read off first of all from the Fatima children, which I might have read in my last my last talk. But um, here it's the Fatima children say, "Our Lady showed us a great sea of fire, which seemed to be under the earth. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls of inhuman form." like transparent burning embers, all blackened or burnished bronze, floating about in the con in the conflagration, which now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with great clouds of smoke, now falling back on every side like sparks in a huge fire, without weight or equilibrium, and amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. The demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repellent likeness of frightful and unknown animals all black and transparent this vision lasted but an instant how can we be how can we ever be grateful enough to our kind heavenly mother who has already prepared us by promising in the first apparition to take us to heaven otherwise i think we might have we would have died of fear and terror so we have the first apparition you know here read about or the first vision of hell that we can that i'm talking about here and the children of Fatima say they would have died from fear and terror just seeing it. Um, and as I talked about my last talk, this really got them on fire for their faith, hearing about this, the reality of what's going to happen to the people they know, or just for people in general, people they don't even know. They just decided they have to, of course, to save themselves from hell. Um, they have to work hard and pray and do asceticism, but also to save others from hell. They, this, t this terror took over them. Um, you know, and <clears throat> I think was their driving, their driving, uh, you know, push, they're, they're, the push for them to really try hard to, to be saintly people. Um, then I'm just going to read another quote from uh, St. Faustina here. And, uh, you know, she's the one people often quote for, like, divine mercy and, you know, how God loves us so much that we will go to heaven no matter what, which, I mean, 
you know. Um, St. Faustina says, Today I was led by an angel into the chasms of hell. It is a, great, a place of great torture. How awesomely large and extensive it is. The kinds of tortures I saw, the, the, first, the, the kinds of torture I saw, the first torture that cons, cons constitutes hell is the loss of God. The second is the perpetual remorse of conscience. The third is that one's condition will never change. The fourth is the fire that will penetrate the soul without destroying it. A terrible suffering. Since it is purely spiritual fire lit by God's anger, the fifth torture is unconditional darkness and a terrible suffocating smell. And despite the darkness, the devils and the souls of the damned see each other and all, of the, and all the evil, both of others and their known. The sixth torture is the constant company of Satan. The seventh torture, suffered by all the damned together, is that not the end of the sufferings, is not, wait, suffered by all the damned together, but not that, but that is not the end of the sufferings. Wait, these are the torturing, oh, sorry, okay. These are the tortures suffered by all the damned together, but that is not the end of the sufferings. There are special tortures destined for particular souls. These are the torments of the senses. Each soul undergoes terrible and indescribable sufferings related to the manner in which it has sinned. There are caverns and pits of torture where one form of agony differs from another. I would have died at the very sight of these tortures if the omnipotence of God had not supported me. Let the sinner know that he will be tortured throughout all eternity in those senses which he, is, which he made use of to sin. So this is only half of the quote from St. Faustina, but I mean, we can see here it's uh, another person, you know, the other saint saying they would have died if it wasn't for the assistance of God. Just here, just this idea of hell or seeing hell. Um, and it's not just as simple as like, you know, <clears throat> fire that hurts really bad, you know, which of course that would, for eternity, that would be terrible. But it's you're punished based off of the things you've done. So based off the senses that you've used wrongly, you will be tortured and you'll be tormented by Satan for eternity. Um, and I just think this is a great imagery that she's given us, that God has given her, that we can kind of, you know, look, think about this stuff and hopefully be terrified, you know, and the, uh, see what the reality is for people and, you know, it just the just realizing that we would never want this for any for anybody, and uh, what we can do to prevent it. You know, thinking about what we can do to prevent it for others and for ourselves. Um, but to finish the quote from Saint Faustina, she says, "I am writing this at the command of God, so that no souls may find any an excuse by saying there is no hell, or that nobody has ever been there, and so no one can say what it is like." I, Sister Faustina, by the order of God, ha have visited the abysses of hell so that I might tell souls about it and testify to its existence. I have received a command from God to leave it, in, leave it in writing. The devils were full of hatred for me, but they had to obey me at the command of God. What I have written is but a pale shadow of the things I saw. But I noticed one thing, that most of those souls there are those who disbelieved that there is a hell. When I came to, I could hardly recover from the fright. How terribly souls suffer there. Consequently, I pray even more fervently for the conversion of sinners. I incessantly plead God's mercy upon them, O oh, oh my Jesus. I would rather be in agony until the end of the world, amidst the greatest sufferings, than offend you by the least sin. So you can see here, she would not want to offend God by the least sin, seeing how. I mean, of course this could be, this is obviously just, she's a saint and she loves God. But seeing how increased her love in God. And made her less likely to sin because of seeing this. Um, and encourage her to pray more fervently for sinners. Pray more fervently for, yeah, for the conversion of sinners. Um, <clears throat> which is just kind of, of course it's a good to pray for others. You know, to be, to be pushed towards a more holy life because of this. Um, but for some reason it's just ignored. Um, <clears throat> and then I do have another quote here. Uh, it's the last quote from Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. Um, and here she says, The exterior of hell was appalling and frightful, 
It was an immense, heavy-looking building, and the granite of which was formed, although black was of metallic brightness, and the dark and the dark and ponderous doors were secured with such terrible bolts that no one could behold them without trembling. Deep groans and cries of despair might be plainly distinguished even while the doors were tightly closed. But oh, who can describe the dreadful yells and shrieks which burst upon the ear when the bolts were unfastened and the doors flung open? And oh, who can depict the melancholy appearance of the inhabitants in this wretched place? All within it, on the contrary, closed, close, confused, and crowded, Every object tends to fill the mind with sensations of pain and grief. The marks of the wrath and vengeance of God are visible everywhere. Despair like a vulture gnaws every heart, and discord and misery reign around. In the city of hell nothing is to be seen but dismal dungeons, dark caverns, frightful deserts, fetid swamps filled with every imaginable species of poisonous and disgusting reptile. In hell perpetual sense of scenes of wretched discord, and every species of sin and corruption, either under the most horrible forms imaginable or represented by different kinds of dreadful torments, all in this dreary abode tends to fill the mind with horror. Not a word of comfort is heard or a consoling idea admitted. The one tremendous thought that the justice of an all-powerful God inflicts on the damned nothing but, but what they have fully deserved is the absorbing tremendous conviction which weighs down on each heart. Vice appears in its own grim, disgusting colors, being stripped of the mask which under which it is hidden in this world, and the infernal viper is seen devouring those who have cherished or fostered it here below. In a word, hell is the temple of anguish and despair. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, it's just every single one of these these visions are just, I, I feel like, worse than than uh, what we really thought about for hell a lot of the times. Um, and of course, if no thought of hell is encouraged, we can never imagine this kind of thing. Um, God gives these saints visions of this place, but the average person won't give it a second thought. It's, it's uh, you know, they, they'll just kind of, oh yeah, that, that thing. Anyways, you know, just, uh, have you heard about this? Have you heard about... Uh, football game or have you heard about new video game coming out have you heard about this oh yeah i've been doing this thing it's just distractions from uh a decision that many will make that will be uh you know and uh oftentimes the people will hear you focused on it even priests will hear this um and they'll kind of act like you're mentally ill for being afraid of it or for thinking about it They'll they'll call you scrupulous, you know. They'll say like, "Oh yeah, just don't don't think about it too hard. God loves you, you know." And of course, yeah, God um, wills your salvation. But at the same time, do you will your salvation? You know, is do you actually will your salvation? Um, these meditations uh, that are you're called scrupulous sometimes. I think. Uh, can't be scrupulous or sinful. They could be, of course, if they're taken too far, but they can't be sinful meditations if the Lord is giving them to his most faithful saints. They, uh, he gives them to people who are very holy, you know, who keep themselves out of sin, but he, he forces it on them. Or I don't know if you want to say he forces it, but he, he shows it to them um, because they need to see it. We need to have a, a picture of what hell is. And uh, I think that the reason he gives these visions a lot of the times is because we wouldn't picture it otherwise. Um, and this, these, these places pictures, pictured are the, uh, is the sad reality for many souls. <clears throat> As Jesus says in Matthew seven thirteen, Enter ye in the, at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many are there are who go um, go in thereat. How narrow is the gate, and straight is the way that leadeth to life, and there are few and, and few are these who find it. I mean, it's just plain and simple. It's few are these who find it. It's not the people you like. You know, all your buddies who are cool. You know, everybody who's smiling and nice. You know, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, yeah, but if, of course we let the people who are chilling. You know, these guys are. These guys are pretty cool. 
You know, they're funny. I'm gonna let them in. No, it's few people find this path. It's, it's narrow and it's given to us in the Gospels. And uh, we can see in the Gospels that gives us clear, um, clear instructions on how to get to heaven and who enters and who doesn't. Um, just through the Ten Commandments and through what the Gospels have said. Um, and it's, of course, very important to have read these. Um, in Corinthians 6, 9, 20, Paul talks about this, and he says, um, he talks about who will inherit the kingdom of heaven, or who won't, I guess. And he says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Um, I mean, is the things that are listed off here are things that you can probably find in, you know, you can take one of these things and find it in so many people around yourself. Like, I mean, of course, sexually immoral, immoral is just most people in our culture nowadays. Um, but other than that, we have slanderers everywhere, greedy people. Everybody's focused on money. Um, idolaters, people just, of course, you know, make something into their god that isn't God. Everybody does it. It's you can just go down this list and uh, think about yourself in this as well, of course. But how many of your friends are like this? Are the people that you like, or the people that you spend time with, or the people that you watch on YouTube or whatever? So, knowing this, many people we know and care about probably won't enter heaven. You know, the people that you that you like to spend time with won't make it there with their current path. They just it just doesn't doesn't seem scripturally correct that they would. Um and I think that because of this, it's good to allow yourself to be taken over with a terror of hell to um to just really you know, Imagine the reality of yourself, of course, being able to go there, you know, and don't get stuck in it forever, but to, you know, have some time where you really picture it, picture your sins and, you know, how you, you probably deserve and you do deserve to go there. Um, and it's only through God being merciful to you um, and through repentance that you can get there. <clears throat> but uh, God's mercy is not something that you can just get just because you you know you can't just live your sinful life and then just be allowed this mercy you have to make an effort to you know to take the mercy or to do you have to make an effort to be able to be granted the mercy um so this terror you know will give you you will start to think about reasons to um or reasons or ways to bring the people around you to heaven. Um, and this fear of hell will make you into a saint yourself because you won't want to sin anymore. Even if it's not through a perfect love of God that you won't want to sin, you won't sin. And, uh, and the stopping of your sinning will change you as a person and you will begin to love God and you will begin to work towards um, his service his service in a way that um, is just for love of him and for service and glorification of him. Um, so that was most of the talk. Uh, in conclusion, you know, the majority of people scripturally, according to the scriptures, will go to hell. Most people are going there. Should we understand what, where they will go, like what it is that they're going to go to? And uh, maybe that will, um, that will, encourage us to really um, try to help them, you know, just once we take a step into hell in our minds, you know, we can, we can see that we would never want them to be there. And uh, we'll, we'll figure out what we need to do to sa help save these people. Um, and I guess, yeah, just the end of it is, and I'm, I'm down for anybody to correct me on this, but I believe God has given us these visions. Um, he's given the saints these visions uh, 
you know, which forms of meditation. And that shows that we are supposed to um, meditate on hell ourselves, you know, even when we're not forced it, like, like have it, have it, even when we haven't had it forced onto us, like in a dream or just, uh, yeah, like a, a vision, or, you know, whatever it would be. Um, but yeah, that'll, uh, that'll end my talk. That's all I had to say.